everyone and welcome to episode 12 of the LDG Experience podcast. How are you doing, Pete? I'm good, thank you. Yes. How are you doing, Tom? I am good, yes. I am well again. I'm very happy to no no longer be in any way unwell um, after suffering for the last, I think, three weeks with one thing and another. But I am fully operational now, which is nice. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Speaking of fully operational, my new studio is finally fully operational. Yes. Yay. Yeah. You can see the wretched hive of hobby and (laughs) miniature graveyard that is my new... uh, Studio for from which we stream and, and do video content, etc. Yeah, so th- this is good because uh, the LDG experience is going to benefit from your yes. from your benefits. Yes, by you also- not only hear our, our dulcet tones, we- but you'll also be able to prove once and for all that we do in fact have faces for radio. Yes, we do in fact look the part. Yeah, <laughs> so- we actually look like nerds. Yes, that's the, the the thing we, we do. But yeah, the uh, Pete yourselves. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. We, we do. We do. Yeah. yeah. But no, we will be uh, recording the podcast with also video content. Yeah, it will so be also video, see. yes. So you can see us get animated when, when things come up. Yes. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the other thing that that actually leads on to mm. is the fact that we are on YouTube. Ooh. Both of us, aren't yes, we? Yes, so we are both on YouTube. Yes. Yes. Uh, Lazy Dragon Gaming on YouTube uh, mm-hmm. and Onyx Dragon Gaming on YouTube. But the podcast... Yes. is on YouTube now. Yes. It has been for uh, about a week and a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it turns out that 95% of the people that listen to our podcast on YouTube mm-hmm. are not subscribed. <gasps> no. uh, so is uh, there something they should do? Yes. So what you should do if you're listening, we would appreciate if you subscribe to our podcast yes. and also to Pete's videos uh, on Extra Gaming. Nice. I imagine yeah. your stats are very similar to ours. Yes. We're, it's, it's all slow. It's a little bit, you know. Yeah. These are, this is the way of new new channels. Yes. But we're doing our best to, like, you know, put more content out and actually let people know that it's there. Yeah. Right. So, the yeah. So, uh, like, share, and subscribe. Yes. That's the, the, the one. The one that everybody says. Indeed. And ring that little bell Indeed. that appears. Because, uh, yeah, that helps us out a lot. And we'd really appreciate it. So show some love. Also, on YouTube, you can leave comments. So if you have any yeah. questions about anything that you hear, you can leave a comment and we'll get back to you. Yes. Because we do actually, well, I say we, Evie checks everything. Yeah. So, and with ch- the checking of everything, we would like to say hello to all our uh, listeners throughout the world, for we are in the Philippines. Yes. We are in America. Yes. Ooh. And we are in Australia. Good day. Yeah. And, but still only on Good planet day, Earth. Mate. Yes, uh, only on planet. We're so, still hoping that one day. Yeah, we will get a Mars yeah, listener. That's, but, that's so if you are listening on Mars, let us know. Maybe they're listening in secret. VPN. V- for us. Yeah, maybe maybe there's a VPN on Mars or something. Yeah. We can't can't tell. And they're listening but not letting us know. But if you are on Mars, please let us know. And with that, we will quickly go through all the usual plugging of stuff. So Lazy Dragon Gaming. Uh, .com, where you can pre-order currently Temporal Forces for Pokemon, if you're a Pokemon player or you know anybody that is. I believe we are the cheapest on the internet currently. Uh, it might have changed since last time I checked, but I did check and we are the cheapest boxes on there. But yeah, LazyDragonGaming.com and Lazy Dragon Gaming everywhere on the social medias, including YouTube, as we mentioned. Pete, do your plugging thing. I am also on the YouTubes at yeah. Dragon Gaming uh, and on the Twitches, hence why we have the new studio set up, so I don't have to, I can keep not forgetting my paints, which I was terrible for when I was doing <laughs> <laughs> AJ TCG. I always forget one. It became like a lottery every week. Who can guess which paint I've forgotten? Yeah. But no, they're all now in a big pile next to my desk, which is good. Just um, a heap. No yeah, organization. Yeah, There's a little yeah. bit of organization. They're all in one box. That's uh, like that's, yeah, that's good. So we're yeah. getting there. But yeah, we're on Twitch Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays from 6 till 10. Ooh. Doing a variety of things. We've Recently, we've been doing 30k white scars, night goblins for old world. There'll be some Bretonian soon as I desperately need to get those ready done in the next month and a half. Really yes, you're going to a Warhammer World event. I am. And we expect a vlog from this, yes, don't we? Yes, I'm excited for my vlog. I've yeah. been getting all the stuff ready and set up, ready to go. Yes. So I'm very excited. We, we, want, we want some vlogging. Yes. That's what we want. Yes. <laughs> yeah, which sounds like some Give sort of Ikea version. <clears throat> yeah. We are talking today about one of my favourite books, uh, and certainly sort of the story of Hell's Reach, but more specifically about Reclusiarch Marek Grimaldus and Trooper, at the time, at the start, Trooper Andre mm. of the Armageddon Steel Legion. Uh, he's a stormtrooper. They're my boys. Yes, indeed. He's a stormtrooper in the Steel He's a stormtrooper in the Steel Legion. Legion. He is cons- nails, yeah, they Yeah, they, one of the higher sort of things, but doesn't have a rank other than stormtrooper. Yeah. Before we start, this is the third war of Armageddon. 
Armageddon. Yes. And if the Inquisition is listening, As the second, the second war, yeah. war of Armageddon, we because, know our place. because the first one didn't happen. No. Also, the backstory of it is a bit nonsense as well, mm-hmm. so that was irrelevant. So the, the, the second war of Armageddon was Garskull Mag Uruk Thraka yes. and his great war descended upon Armageddon mm-hmm. and were stopped by Commissioner... Commissar. Commissar Yarek. Yarek. At Hive Hades. Uh, yes. Because he was basically... Th- he, the, he didn't get on with the governor, who turned out to be a complete knob. Yep, who and sided with the orcs, if I remember right. He does in the third one, yeah, yeah, because yeah. of all the crap yeah. that went down, they yeah. were like, you are a traitor to his, to his Imperial Majesty. Um, but yeah, so he didn't like the fact that Yarek was, you know, competent yeah. and wanted to actually stop these orcs and things. Um, so he banished him to Hive Hades, which was a kind of a backwater that was always going to be directly in the path of the orcs, thinking he'd just get murdered as the orcs swept over it. And no. No. Nope. He rallied everyone there and just held them off for uh, pretty much until the Space Marines arrived. Yes. Under, under the command, command of our boy. Yes. Louis Dante. Louis Dante. Yeah. And, and the Blood that Angels. Was the end of the Second War. Yep. And then Garskull did a legger. Yes. Bogged off. Yep. Reformed a load of things. Yeah. Smacked there around. Was a bunch of stuff going on. Yep. Um, he captured. He captured Jarek, in fact. Yes, he did. At Golgotha. Yes. Previously home one of the squats. No, that never happened. That never happened. And then he sent him back, Jarek, yep. because he's like, you know, orcs need good enemies. Yep. Uh, and Jarek knew that he'd be back at some point. Then he returned, and the first thing he did was drop a bunch of rocks, which are small asteroids that orcs use as kind of like mobile, a bit like ships, like yep. space orcs, but a lot smaller. Yep. And the first thing he did was drop a rock on Hive Hades to make a point. Repeat. To be like, uh, no, you ain't gonna <laughs> yeah, you know, none of that. here specifically. They, they, uh, Yarek did actually know that was coming, and he warned him, and yeah, he got they, like they, as much out of Hades as he possibly could yeah. before it was coming. He, he, he was like, they ain't gonna try and attack it again. Yeah. They're just gonna. It's what, like, I do like the beginning of the war where things are like building up, and everyone knows that Gaza's coming, and all these things. The first things are happening, and then like all these various commands are coming, and all the Space Marines and various Imperial troops are, running, and then one shuttle touches down, yeah. and the, the ramp drops. And out comes the old man. The old man, the they old, call Arm, old the man, man of Armageddon. Armageddon. And everyone's yeah. pretty much like, "Oh, we got this now. We got this. We're fine uh, yeah, now. Yeah, Everything's yeah, okay. Yeah, he's in charge. Yeah, right, it, let's done. get going." <laughs> so, uh, that being said, the accumulation mm. of uh, forces, which we're going to run through first. Yes. Uh, this, I said, I was, I would say quickly, but there's a lot. So bear yeah. with. Uh, you will tell us, of course, Pete, if you know of any of these Space Marine chapters, because this Definitely. is where we're starting first. Yes. So we're going to start with the Angels of Fire. Yep. Any? No. No. Nothing about them. No. Angels of Redemption. I believe are one of the Dark Angel successors. Yeah. I want to uh, say. The Angels of Vigilance. Which are definitely a Dark Angel successor. Yeah. The Angels. Poor uh, Fear. Poor fear. Uh, I don't know them specifically. No, I don't know either. The black, I the bl- I'm pretty certain, though, I think it might be the only poor fear who had a really awesome... There's like a there's a short story about like an entire sort of group of dreadnoughts from various from various chapters. The dreadnought was like the ex-captain of a devastated company. So I had the uh. for one of the Nova Marines. They, they literally was like almost like a couple of squads worth of dreadnoughts held off a massive attack on a refinery mm. by like shed loads of dreadnoughts and, and uh-huh. kill cans and stuff. Uh-huh. It was kind of cool. The Black Dragons. Yes, famous from the yes. one of the Wibbly foundings. They end up with like growths and like spikes yeah spikes they have bone spikes almost yeah, like, Wolf, like Wolverine like Wolverine, Wolverine claws. Claws. Yeah, yeah. Who, they're a successor of somebody aren't they who are they, who uh, they? I can't remember off the top I can't remember the yeah obviously yeah, yeah. Uh, the Black Templars yeah uh, obviously obviously they, we're going to get to them in a minute they brought the biggest amount of they brought uh, a lot yeah, not the yeah. entire chapter but a lot of a lot of the chapter yeah, yeah. three crusades it says here yeah. which is quite a lot mm. uh, the Blood Angels yeah because of course obviously the overall commander of the ground forces yes the Celebrants Yep. Uh, the Celestial Lions. Now, yes, this, this this one yeah. we're going to come back to. Because they are because... They, they're featured heavily in the sort of side. Because a lot of these Space Marine Battle Norse, which we talked like the Hera's Reach, they had like a secondary, like shorter story that went with it. And the Celestial Lion mm-hmm. story is that one. Yep. Uh, we've discussed the Exorcists in the past. Yes. Uh, the Fire Angels. Never heard of those ones. They're also, yeah, one of the ones that may or may not be the. Oh, yes, uh, of course. They're also from Bad Ab. Yes, the from. Bad Ab region. Uh, the Flesh Terrors, who we've yeah, also discussed. Samuel Seth was there. Yeah. Gabriel Seth. Uh, the Iron Champions. Don't know them. Don't know them. Marines Malevolent. Yes. I believe are a Blood those. Angels successor. I'm not sure. Stop I it. think yeah. so. Uh, the Mortifactors. Who yes, I who believe love skulls. They do. Lots of love, love skulls. They do. Uh, the Omega Marines. Yep. Uh, the Raptors. Now this one yes. I didn't... I love Raptors. They're pretty cool. Are they a Raven Guard yes, successor? They yeah, they're okay. basically like... They kind of look and operate properly like modern special forces. Like, oh, that's okay. their gimmick. Yeah. Thing. Next, we have the Relictors, who were probably oh, there to nickel. No, the... they were, specifically. There was a massive, like, leftover from the n- first war of Armageddon. Yes. Uh, there was an enormous brass cornate symbol in one of the jungles of the equatorial region of Armageddon. Right. So they were. And they were kind of around there for reasons. Yes. They're known for, specifically, for those who don't know, the Relictors are known for taking the weapons of chaos and using them against 
Yes. Against Chaos. Is that that's their yeah, that's, that's their, their uh, gig. So next we have the Salamanders. Of course. Uh, they yes. they came with six companies mm-hmm. and they I believe much all of them. I believe they're chapter masters as well. Yes, yeah. which to shun. Yeah. Uh the Silver Skulls. Yep, another famous yep. chapter. The, uh, um, I think there's they're either a Blood Angel or a Ultramarine I think, they're, I think they're an Ultramarine successor. Yeah. Uh, the Sons of Gilliman, uh, yeah. I'm going to guess, are a, a, yeah, yeah, surprisingly. A, could be an Ultramarine successor. Yeah. Uh, the other one who came in a lot more force than I actually oh. thought they did was the Space Wolves. Now, that oh, obviously, yeah. everybody knows them. Who came with three great companies, yeah, which, is, which is himself. a fucking lot yeah, of yeah. Space Wolves. Yeah, there's three entire great companies. Yep. I yeah, I don't remember I which ones exactly. No. But yeah. yeah, there was a lot of space wolves oh, there. Yeah. Uh, the Storm Giants and the Storm Lords, both of whom I believe oh, are White Scar White Scars successors, mm-hmm. because the, the white, last one is, is the, the White Scars. Scars. Uh, so yeah, they came with uh, two and three brotherhoods respectively. Yeah, now that's their name for company. Yeah, it's, it's a company, but yeah. it, it, I don't think it's a hundred Marines. After that, we have an estimated one point five million guardsmen from across uh, from across the Armageddon subsector. Which is not a lot. It's not, to no. be honest. Yeah, uh, but I will list them because yeah, yeah. We, we we did the we did the honors with the honors. The Thirteenth Penal Legion. Yeah. The Armageddon Ash Waste Militia. Uh, the Armageddon Command Guard, Hive Militia, Orc Hunters, and Steel. Oh, the Orc Hunters are cool. Yes. They're, they're kind of like, you know, cat chants at home. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. F- from the first war. Uh, the second war. Yeah, because, yeah, the problem with the Orcs is once they, they're on a planet, they're very yeah. hard to root out. Yeah. And especially in the jungle areas, the Orcs tend to come back quite a lot. So there's various camps out there where absolute nut bar, <laughs> yeah. like, wannabe cat chants basically and grow up and, and just, yeah, go out in patrols and just murder Orcs. Murder constantly. Orcs. Yeah. They, they, they're quite cool because they, like, they understand the psychology of Orcs as well. Yeah. So they're like put like skull face paints on and like they wear orc teeth and they really know how to mess with orc psychology so yeah they're quite cool they're quite they're pretty cool they're i like the orc hunters yeah. they're really good the asphartia asphartia sorry peel legion yeah. uh there were 11 legions of those which is quite yeah. a lot uh the asgardian rangers mm-hmm. uh cadian shock troops katachan jungle fighters oh, yes. Uh, the Death Corps of Krieg, yep. the Elysian Drop Troops, uh, the Jopal Indentured Squadrons, which I've no idea what they are, nope. uh, the Ogryn Auxiliaire, there were two regiments of them, yep. uh, there's a t- uh, Minervian Tank Legion, another og- another bunch of Ogryns, uh, the Mordian Iron Guard, who are, who are good, I like those, uh, Nocturne Strike Forces, do we know what? No, we don't. No, no there's idea some of the regiments that came, because at yeah. the time of the Third War, because it was a big World War campaign, you got some rules for some of these units. Yes. So things like the Orc Hunters and ones we haven't mentioned, I can't remember what you haven't mentioned yet, because the Elysian yeah. Dropshipers, this was their first real mention. Yes. And they had little rules for them, yeah. yeah. So then we've got the Savalar Chem Dogs. Again, they were another one mentioned. And the Chem Riders. Yeah, so they're they were kind of like, they're, they're not quite <laughs> penal troopers, yeah. but they're very close. So yeah. like will move to <laughs> Not so this one, <laughs> the reason I'm chuckling, and you'll yeah. get it in a second, the Semtexian Bombardiers. Ah, because Semtex. Semtex, yeah. yes, the Semtexian yeah. Bombardiers. And yeah, um, the planet after explosives. Yeah, yeah why Semtex not, indeed. Yeah. Uh, then you've got the Stormtroopers, you've got 18 companies of Stormtroopers. Yeah, they'll be possibly positional. Or, yeah. Well, they're all from the Scholar Pagenium, technically. They so, are, yeah. yeah. And then the Zovan Skirmishers, who yeah. I've never no. heard of. Uh, Adeptus Sororitas, we have the Order of the Martyred Lady. Yes, because, and this is my little aside, this is where they changed their colours. Ah, okay. So the original color scheme from the original second edition codex, where they were black armor with black tabards with white trim, okay, was their original color scheme. But because of the losses they took on Armageddon Three, the entire order changed its color scheme um, and changed its road color to be red to recognize the amount of blood they had shed in defense of the Emperor. Okay. Realm. So, yeah, and then one that we'll come back to shortly, which mm. is the Order of the Ardent Shroud, and they do play yes. they do play a little bit into our story mm. uh, and a little bit later on uh, Adeptus Mechanicus forces yeah. uh, we have uh, the Centurio Ardena- Ordinatus the yes l- again this is something that pops up in Hell's Reach yes uh, <laughs> the Legio Curus uh, it was a demi legio there, mm-hmm. uh, legio ignatum. Yes, the fire wasps. Yes, invigilata. Who we're going to come back to again? Yes, There's again, another one that does come up. Legion. Yep, invigilata is the one that plays a part in yes. our story today. Uh, story. Magma, uh, Metallica. Don't worry about that, my boys. <laughs> I believe it is it the entire Legio for Legio Metallica? No, Demi Legio. Oh. Uh, so there's a quarter for Magma, a Demi for Metallica, mm. and it, the entire Legio Tempestor, yep. and the entire Legio Victorum, and 14 regiments of Scutari. Yes. Uh, and then we have a bunch yeah. of them. Oh, yeah, because there's a lot of, like, also here, maybe yeah. in numbers. So then, and, and then, and then we have uh, Officio Assassinorum, uh, classified. Yes. Uh, Officio uh, Sabatorium, classified. Right. 
Uh, Ordo Xenos, classified, mm-hmm. and the Templars... Oh, there's some kill team dudes. Yeah. The Templars Psychologists. Yeah. Uh, and that brings... And then the Imperial Navy. I'm not going to go yeah, through yeah. the Imperial Navy. We don't need to know that. Um, but that just gives you... Command of Admiral Perrault, I think. Uh, and uh, gr- uh, High Marshal Hel- Hel- Helbrecht. No, I believe it's Helbrecht that takes... I know Hel- Helbrecht technically is in charge yeah. of all, the, all of the assets, but I believe yeah. like, from the Imperial Naval side. I don't actually get that on my little that list. Been, but yeah, yeah I don't get that one. Uh, but yeah, so the, and then the Imperial Navy, there's a yep. shit, shit ton of ships from oh, a shit ton yeah. of places. Because yeah. uh, all featured obviously... heavily in Battlefleet Gothic. Yes. Um, the second, the big expansion for Battlefleet Gothic, Armada, when that came out, the book Armada, the big campaign in that is the third war for Armageddon's campaign. Yes. Where I was talking about the the Silent Horseman last time. Ah, yes. That's where that comes yeah, from. Yeah. Now we move on to the important bit, which is the the battle for Hell's Reach, which is yes. a, a hive city mm-hmm. uh, on Armageddon Primus, yeah, the, main uh, the main continent of Armageddon, mm-hmm. and it is one of the larger ones. And it is where our hero of the day, the hour, the newly ordained reclusiarch yes. uh, Grimaldus, he succeeded Mordred, who'd been killed by Chaos, yeah. and his gear retrieved, uh, and he'd recommended that Grimaldus take over from him, mm-hmm. he basically uh, Helbrick says, "Okay, then you are now got this. you you got this. You are now the reclusiarch, which is basically the head chaplain yeah. of the Black Templars, and the yeah. Black Templars obviously being a very religious." Mm-hmm. Uh, chapter, so they take their. This is probably the most. Yeah, well, it's yeah. usually one of the highest posts in a chapter, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, in a, in, a, in a chapter like the the Templars, it's even more. Yeah, he literally second only to to Helbrecht. Yes, so he he takes this honor and he's quite yeah. happy about it right up until the point where Helbrecht says we have to have forces on the planet. Yeah. And uh, Grimaldus basically goes, no, yeah. which I thought was particularly strange because when Helbrick said to him, you're going to stay with 100 Marines in, in Hell's Reach, Reach yeah. Grimaldus literally turned around to him and said, no, no yeah. you can't do this to no. me. Do not leave me on this backwater hall to die while all my... While the rest of you are all doing cool stuff cool in space. Cool stuff in space. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't do this to me. And he actually walks away from Helbrecht, Ooh. which is like a big deal. Oh, yeah. Because uh, he's essentially defying a direct order from his chapter master. Yeah. But it shows that, like said, yeah. Yeah, he, is, he is convinced firmer. that he is mm. going to die on Armageddon. Yeah, and he's, he's in some pointless stand yeah. that's not worth anything. Yeah. He's like, why am I here? Why am I? Yeah, he wants to sell his life, obviously, highly for the Emperor, but he yeah. feels like this is a complete yeah. backwater assignment. Yeah. So he he is there. It's like, guard the post it notes while yeah. we're off doing all the cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. He he's not happy about it at all. He's very melancholy about it. In fact, like the the one thing with the Hell's Reach novels, it gives you a very sort of deep insight into just how melancholy like Grimaldus is. Yeah, because like from the from the Codex's side of it, before I read like Hell's Reach, which was a while ago, because I'm not I'm deferring to you. Much, <laughs> from like the Codex side of it, you get the feeling that Grimaldus is very much a fervent, bombastic preacher, yes. lead from the front, very angry, almost similar to Asmodeus, sort of that kind of yep. fervor. Yep. Um, and that's the kind of idea you get for Grimaldus I think yes but yeah the book really paints him in a different light yeah he, it puts like, him very put, humanising yeah he, he puts him it. he puts him into a as he starts off you, you get the the thing all the way through that the Black Templars don't really value humans no, are they because they're one of the like, unlike the Blood Angels and the Imperial Fists, who will go out, and the Salamanders, who mm. do come up in a bit later on, they all value human life. They will go out yeah, of yeah. their way. The Salamanders, especially, will go oh, very far much. too far. Whereas the Black Templars are the polar opposite of this. Yes. They, 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 they're to save humanity as a concept. Yes, <laughs> that they, matters very. Yeah. And individual people very matter very little to that. Yeah, concept. they have no like. If, they, they will happily have a hundred thousand guardsmen die mm. uh, to to stop one thing. That's yeah. fine. They're yeah, humans. Yeah. It doesn't. Matter. Yeah. They don't. They don't. They die in service of the emperor. Yeah. That's all that matters. That all that matters. That's all matters. Where they yeah. came from. As long as humanity is defended yep. as a concept, we can spare thousands, millions, mm-hmm. trillions of lives. lives. Yep. Doesn't matter to them at all. Yeah. But during the course of Hell's Reach, you do Ooh. get the impression that Grimaldus really does start to go. Actually, they do matter. Yeah. And actually, without them, at times we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Yes. Uh, and there are a couple of instances throughout this where you realise that Grimaldus is sort of going. Mm, maybe people aren't that bad mm. and maybe they're not as worthless as I thought they were but we will come back yes. to that because it's super relevant so the reason why we get Trooper Andre introduced who's the other hero of our little story doesn't come into it as much as Grimaldus does mm. but Grimaldus wants the Ornate Ordinatus Armageddon oh, yes. yeah, which he- is out in the desert yeah there's literally like a it's buried isn't it yes. there's like a random massive like 
underground um, complex. Underground complex that's just buried. Yes. And he figures out, he finds out, and he, like, through, yeah. like, a tech room, is it a tech Yeah, no, it's, he basically... Or some old piece of floor. It's like, why have we got people guarding that over there? Yeah. Uh, why is there a random depot in the middle of nowhere yeah. that's really heavily fought, uh, yeah, uh, really secure? Yeah, like, what what's going on with that There's got to be something useful in it. <laughs> yeah, and so then they, they find out what's in it. Yeah. So the Ordinators, these were a very... Originally popped up for this is my mind bit comes. Yes, in. you do this. But so the Ordinatus were some really cool things that used to be for the really old epic. Mm. Um, they're a smaller version of the the Ordinatus Minoris, which are in uh, Her- the Horus Heresy. You can get those for your Mechanicum army. Right. But these are the Ordinatus Majoris, of which we know of three. There is the Ordinatus Golgotha, the Ordinatus Mars. And the Ordinatus Armageddon. I'm assuming the one that we I remember, I'm assuming, is the Armageddon yeah. one. One of them has a ridiculous battery of like ICBMs on it. Okay. I can't wait. Like I said, I can't wait. This has yeah, been so, a long, long so time ago. We're that, talking that, like 25, 30 years ago. This is not the Armageddon. Yeah, yeah. This is the, not. Oh, one right. of them has a naval lance. So the main, like, imagine, imagine taking like the biggest battleship and their main guns, taking one of those off and putting it on tracked vehicles. That is one of the others. And then the third one is some sort of weird sonic cannon thing. Right. Well, the Ordinar... I think the Armageddon is the lance. lance. It is yeah. It is a uh, naval lance yeah. battery, yeah. which is, at the time, mounted upon an actual thing they call Oberon. Yes. Now, the Mechanicus mm. uh, deem it... You cannot wake this thing up. Oh yeah, it's regard like you know what the bureaucracy of the period yep. like mechanical. Yeah, it's one of those we'd need like three million priests. We've got to have yep. a particular priest of this rank so that we can do the rooms of activation and all the chanting it's, and yep. incense burning. You can possibly they, they can't wake no, Oberon. No, no. we're not the, without. We're not without the whole thing. Yeah, it's sad, the, it's it's what's it? But mm. uh, Grimaldus basically says, <laughs> I, don't <laughs> no, I don't care. I want that gun. Yeah, because it is. Basically capable of le- like winning them the war, yeah, um, without any question. It, it's a starship lance. It is. These are the things they use to bombard planets. Yes, yeah. it, and it's basically on the thing. Yeah. So he takes his uh, tech marine. Yes, and he takes him to uh, D twelve West, which is where they are in the desert. And waiting there is a small company of stormtroopers. Mm. And a, a member of this company of stormtroopers is a trooper named Andre, mm-hmm. and this is the first time we meet Andre, and he's uh, always funny uh, because they see the gunship approaching, and uh, and his 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 mate sat next to him says, uh, "There's a gunship coming in," and he says, "Well, is it Space Marines?" And he says, "Yes." He says, "If it's a Starties, then this is going to be good." <laughs> it's good I, I'm fun, looking yeah. looking forward to what. Well, I suppose if you've been told to guard a literal just like hole in the ground yeah. in the middle of a desert. Yeah. For- however long yeah they basically he's now super keen because they they knew they were all going to die yeah, uh, yeah they're out in the middle of nowhere mm. no backup no support no, no, no nothing no. And, and basically <laughs> they were like well shit we're all gonna die here and then obviously grimaldus arrives and they're like well hey, maybe maybe not we might be able to go Whereas, back. it seems like is more like not like hey we're saying but more like well at least this next few and few hours broke days are gonna be fun, fun. yep pretty <laughs> much uh, so yeah, so they go down. They send the tech marine down. Yeah. They find the ordinators and they head back and they leave the Ooh. the tech marine there. He's busy like decoding decoding yeah. the way in yes. is the thing. So they get back, but in returning now the majoris, the princeps majoris of yes, Legio this, Invigilata. Yes, mounted on one of my favourite things of all time, Storm Herald, which is an Imperator Storm class yes. battle titan, which is my. favourite favorite yeah. the model that got me into this hobby yes fact. it is um, it is a big ass time one i am really really hoping for well, if you're listening <laughs> to please 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 re-release for it just titanicus or Ligionis imperial, 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 imperial. whatever it's called now please 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 yep so, uh, but she is obviously of the Mechanicus and mm-hmm. pissed off oh, yeah. that Grimaldus dare she enter. Didn't, he did not fill out those forms uh, in no, he, he did no. not pray for the requisite 72 days. He, he did, it is. He did yeah. none of that. He didn't no. burn any incense. He practically just switched it on. Who does, <laughs> does shit like this? But she summons him. Now, yeah. as we know, Space Marines, especially Reclusiarchs, do not do well being summoned no. by anybody. But she says to him, uh, Grimaldus, Maldus, you promised me uh, that you know we'd fight together and die together and yeah, whatever. You just... And you have breached your word. You, your emperor would not stand for this. And Grimaldus this says, like, uh, "Anna, our em- emperor. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, that's your first mistake. mistake. Yeah. And I will allow you three. <laughs> now, the second mistake that uh, she makes is basically to say that he is a heretic. 
Oh yeah, uh, because oh, he is ooh, that's a entering word there. Yeah, entering into this this uh, thing with Oberon, and he says, it's "That's unsanct- your second yes, mistake." I am Reclusiarch, mm. uh, a chaplain of the Black Templars. I will not be called a heretic. No. So then, as the conversation goes on, she then inadvertently, given a little bit of thing, threatens him. To which he replies, "And that was your third and final mistake." So she's like, well, what exactly are you going to do about it? And he says, well, I'm going to kill everybody in here, and then you... This is on the bridge. On the bridge of, of the Titan. Titan. Yeah. I'm going to kill everybody in here. She's floating in a tank, by the way. The, yeah. big, the really old princeps tend to be in, like, these weird... Like, Soupy tank things. Yeah, because yeah. they're directly connected by mind impulse units, yes. or MIUs, to their Titans. They are. After a while, and obviously they get old. It's yeah. easier for them to not, like, helps keep them alive, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking Minority Report. It's yes. a bit like that, or, like, the Bax tank that Luke's in, yeah. the Empire Strikes Back. Think that. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it looks a lot like that with the, the thing. Yeah. She doesn't have hands and feet. She does have legs and arms, but no hands and feet. And she yeah. has no eyes. She has ocular mm-hmm. implants. Yeah, very old. And yeah. the Titan will eventually the the systems on the Titan will overcome her. Yeah, and, then and, and they burn her out, burn her out, yeah, and then they'll get a new one. Yeah, and uh, her personality will be subsumed into the yes. MIU. It's all weird it's very and strange. Arcane, but uh, any, yeah. but yet uh, Grimelda says, "Well, I'm going to kill all of you. Yeah, uh, and then I'm going to kill you last and throw you out of the window of your Titan." Yeah, and she's like. Like, mm, I'd like to see you. I'd try. like to see you try. At which point, Grimaldus's gunships appear right in front of the, mm. uh, which basically, and he says, "Listen, I tell you what we'll do. Yeah. I will give you my word. We will not awaken Oberon, mm. but I'm going to have my tech marine take the gun off. Yes, and we will have the gun yeah. that is. But we won't wake." Oberon. Yeah, the weird transportation. That will have to do for you, and if you yeah. disagree with me or threaten me again, I'm going to order my gunships to obliterate this entire cockpit. And she yeah. says, but you'll die. And he says, I know I'll die, but you will die as well. Yes. Um, so that's all I care about. Yes. So that is that is now the the Oberon section. Yeah. We jump forward then to the, uh, to the sort of invasion by orcs into yeah. the city. And a lot of g- very generic sort of fighty yeah, stuff of cool, happens. Yeah. Uh, really cool bits with the with the squads of Templars yeah. and uh, the Armageddon Steel Legion. Uh, at which point they launch their the last of their airborne superiority, uh, which is the fifty eighty twos. Yeah. And the, the reason why Grimaldus gives them so much leeway to do pretty much whatever they want is in the past they fought with the Black Templars and be yes. given permission to use the Templars yeah. sigil oh, cross, on yeah. the cross on mm. their aircraft. Which is, if you don't think about it, is a huge deal. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the one of the marshals of a, a crusade basically with the 5082 mm. said, you guys did really, really well here. Have a sticker. Have a sticker. Yeah. And they did, and that gives them an awful lot of leeway mm. with the Black Templars, who are yeah. pretty much in command on the thing. Yeah. And, and basically he says, we, we, we think we should do this. And Grimaldus is like, I don't know a lot about aircraft. And fighting but I, in atmosphere. But I see that thing on your seal stick, yeah, so I trust you. Yeah, yeah, you go and do your thing. So off they go, uh, and a lot of them get dead yeah. in the process. And basically, on the way out, the f- commander, whose name I can't remember, he's a major, and he basically says, if you get shot down, don't try and bail out. Aim your bird at oh. the biggest thing you, you can, can see find, yeah. and smash it into it you mm. don't want to get captured yeah and that happens quite a lot and it happens yeah. to him he takes out a, a he hits a gorkonaut i think yeah he gets shot down his wing gets blown off and he just pilots his bird He's straight like, that's big and all looking <laughs> yep smash yeah. so that's most of the air superiority around hell's reach now gone mm-hmm. uh they still have anti-air guns and stuff yeah. like that uh but we jump forward a little bit now to the docks where they get attacked oh, by the sim- welding like, I don't know because I know this is some of the stories from Armageddon. Like I know that like one of the, some of the docks yes. was attacked by orc submersibles. They did, and the some of the dock crane workers welded themselves into their cabs and used mm-hmm. the cranes to fight. They did, which is pretty badass. They did, and what they did also was the um, the dock master basically mm. said, well, because uh, they were trying to figure out how to reinforce the docks. Yeah, and the dock master says, well, give us guns. Yeah, and we'll fight. Yeah, and they're like, that's that's about the only thing we've got. Yeah, yeah let's do that. So yeah. this is where we get Trooper Andre back again now, yep. because he is given a squad of dock workers with, and they're all given a um, a stormtrooper. These squads. Yeah, and he gets. Like, yeah, he's like the one competent dude. Yeah, he's like the, you will. The, the, that bit goes towards the enemy. Pull the trigger. Go pew pew. Yep. They fall over. Rinse and repeat. Yeah, so. and and they say to them. If in doubt, go forward. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter what's happening. If mm. you've any any doubt about 
out what's happening, just keep going forward. They're cold still. They don't cold, like it up. They don't like it up and yeah. keep going forward. But Trooper Andre and the Doc Master are now part of this little uh, yep. little thing. And, of course, the docks are getting bombarded. Grimaldus and his squad arrive Ooh. to help them. Yes. And they get surrounded pretty quickly by orcs. Because they know that the beakies is the, the, the tough ones. The tough ones go after the tough ones. Ooh. So, of course, uh, up above, on top of a roof, you can got Trooper Andre, and he looks over the precipice of this little thing, and he sees Squad Grimaldus, and they're getting mullered. Yeah. And they're getting pretty beat up. So he says to his squad, we're going to help them. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're all going to come up at once, we're all going to open fire on them, then duck back down before we get shot. <laughs> but very important, people, when you don't shoot the Templars. Yeah, don't shoot the guys in black. Don't yeah. shoot the guys in black. If you think you can't make, aim further out, yeah. just don't shoot. You won't, hurt, you won't kill them, but you will make them angry, <laughs> and that's not what you want. <laughs> so this happens. They don't shoot any of the Templars, which yeah. is quite good. And Grimaldus obviously said... And his squad gets mm-hmm. saved by Trooper Andre. And this really? is the first time, really, that Trooper Andre and Grimaldus meet. Yeah. Because Trooper Andre... He's seen, seen him in the distance. Yeah, he's seen him in the distance. They've, they've, seen, they've been, around, they've been mm-hmm. around each other's orbit, but yeah, they've yeah. never actually met. Yeah. And this is the point where you actually get Grimaldus and Trooper Andre meeting for the first time. Mm. And you, you kind of get the... Trooper Andre doesn't give a shit. You can tell yeah. he's a stormtrooper, his life expectancy isn't very long, and he basically greets Grimaldus like an old friend and how he's just saved him. And, he, and Grimaldus is like, well, thank you for your help. And he's like, no, no, you're very welcome. We're always here to help you, old friend. Yeah. Whatever more can we do? Yeah. But don't forget to mention it to my captain when we get back. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I might get promoted and then my, my lady might look on me more favourably if yeah. I get pr- promoted, nudge, nudge. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to mention how I saved you. Yeah. And obviously Grimaldus at this point is like, like what is this person what, saying to what me? Are you? What, what, what are you? What is you, this? What is this? What's going on? Yeah. So, yeah, so then obviously they then split back up again. Mm. And as I mentioned, the salamanders were there. Yes. And, and now the salamanders drop into the city to help. Yes. Uh, Grimaldus is obviously very grateful for the for the assistance from more space marines. Mm-hmm. But we do get a situation where the uh, Black Templars and the salamanders, they're fighting, they get a chance to uh, follow up an attack. Yes. But the salamanders refuse to advance. Well, no one think of the children. Well, no one think of the children. That's pretty much and, and this is thing. This is where Grimaldus sort of loses all of his uh, diplomatic thing with this other chapter. They've, yeah. they've come to help him and he's very grateful, but by God are they hard work and why will they never charge into combat? Yeah, yeah. Why are they always stood next to the civilians? Why can't we just yeah. kill the orcs and that will save the civilians? Don't yeah. you understand? And they're like, no, no, if we, if we attack out, then the civilians will be left undefended and they might die. Yeah. To which Grimaldus is like, but if and we don't kill the orcs, yeah, we will they will all die. Yeah. And they have a bit of a... Ideological it? debate. Yeah, an ideological <laughs> debate about whether or not what's it is, which way is correct. And yeah. basically Grimaldus says, I'm glad you're leaving because they're going off to fight with their chapter master. And Grimaldus basically says, get the fuck Good out of my city. Yeah, yeah. I am sick and tired of having to carry your asses yeah. because you refuse to commit to a fight. Yeah. Uh, which I think is reasonable to be honest like they have to win and the civilians are going to die either way I will I will yeah I, 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 I can see his point of view but I can also see the Salamander's point of view because yeah. their whole thing is they're very much of the opinion and this is like you know it's that classic oh, a thousand people worth the life of one man yeah you know all that kind of thing and like there's arguments for both sides you yeah I th- if you forget the one like I think having the Salamanders in around to keep reminding people that actually it is about the people is helpful they don't necessarily be right all the time like, it's <laughs> probably in this situation they may not be right overall but having them as that angel on the shoulder of the Imperium sometimes yeah. is, being like, look, it is actually about these people at the end of the day. That's what we're here to serve them, not the other way around. Yeah. Is useful in the wider context. Yeah. I but think... in the smaller context mm-hmm. of we need to defend this hive, I get what Grimaldus is saying. Yeah, I think Grimaldus at this point is basically saying, I have my way of winning this war, and yeah. you are stopping that from happening. Yeah, you're not helping. You're so not helping. Bugger, you're off, bugger yeah. off. You're not going to help piss off. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So he's basically, get the fuck out of my city. Yeah. I'll do it my way. And so far, my way has been working. As the war progresses, you find that uh, Hell's Reach is falling 
Yes. Uh, the orc numbers that are assaulting Hell's Reach are insurmountable yes. for the amount of a people. A green tide, if you will. Yes, a massive green tide. Now, they are supported by gargants coming out of the Mannheim Gap, your good friend yes. Mannheim. Uh, mm-hmm. And that is where we're going to take a minor segue, yeah. because the Mannheim Gap is very important to a completely different chapter. Yes. And that different chapter is the Celestial Lions. Yes. This is where they come into yes. the story, well, into a different story. Into a slightly different story. Set at the same time. It is co- running concurrently mm. to this. Now, Meanwhile, the, the Celestial Lions... Yeah. <laughs> the, um, they are sent by uh, High Command yeah. to take out the Gargant factories at the Mannheim Gap, mm. uh, where all the big scrap titans and Gargants and all the rest of it, they're all coming from there. Yeah. But... There is something wrong with their communication. Yeah. There is something wrong with their uh, information. Uh, their data is out of date. The, the, oh, all of that is wrong. That's really weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's very odd that they also previously, on a different engagement, had a fallout with the Emperor's Inquisition. Yeah. It's weird uh, how those things line yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and with the exception, I think, of three of the Celestial Lions, yeah. the entire chapter is oh, wiped yeah. out. Yeah, the English, yeah um, this is very much the Inquisition being like, huh, no. No, <laughs> you will do as you are told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so the previously on to the Celestial Lions, mm. they, they had a fallout with the Inquisition. Yeah. Uh, now, the exact details of that fallout, I don't oh, actually yeah. know. Well, I, I do know, but I can't remember what it is. Yeah. But they fell out with them pretty egregiously. And I think it was something to do with... Ah, no. Memory comes back. They went to a planet mm. and the, they quelled the uprising, which I believe was a chaos uprising, mm. and killed off all the cults and everything and deemed the planet saved fine. and fine and the Inquisition then like, came in nah uh, exterminatus exterminatus the fuck out of this planet no no and that's what sparked it. I'm pretty certain that's yeah. what it was. That, that was. I was going to say that it was definitely something that involved yeah, war crimes. Yeah, of some description. Yeah, yeah they yeah. they basically refused to our exterminate as a planet that they. They were like, yeah, we've done a good job. We've yep. managed to keep. We managed to save this planet in the name of the emperor. And the Inquisition was like, yeah, yeah, but is it though? Yeah. So plus, there's plenty more where they came from. From Newcomb. Yeah. Uh, so they said no and stopped the Inquisition from exterminating. And the Inquisition probably went, okay, fine, 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 <laughs> and then quietly made a note of it. Yeah. In there to be uh, <laughs> to continued be. notebooks. Yeah. So obviously, then to they all later. they all left, mm-hmm. uh, and then the Inquisition came back and exterminated the planet. Yeah, and that's what, they do. that's what they do. But that knocked off the Inquisition as far as the Celestial Lions mm-hmm. were concerned. And then when we get to Armageddon, they're sent in to deal with the, all the, the yeah. gargants and things. And all their information is wrong. Their communication doesn't work. Their uh, sort of battle strategy is out of date. Like everything, the, the, these gargants are not yet constructed. You've seen not, these sort of things yeah. in very various political thrillers yeah. where they're like, they send in this back ops team and they're like, oh, we got bad intel. And yeah. it was a way to wipe these guys that because they knew too much they knew too much yeah, but yeah usually, they, and then usually like three, one of them survives and kills everyone yep. that's usually what happens in these movies and, and I'm pretty certain it's kind of something not similar to that but like I'm pretty certain the three surviving Earth Alliance do reconstitute the chapter mm-hmm uh-huh. Because they are featured yes. later on. They are featured later on, and Grimaldus does feature in that because mm. they go back to the Mannheim. Because they also fe- feature later on in the 40k timeline. Because mm-hmm. I yeah. think again the Inquisition have their chapter master assassinated. Yes, <laughs> uh, they don't leave them alone. No, uh, but they, they do get. Like, I, I believe they get Primaris reinforcements. Yeah, no, they do. Yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. It's, it's when they get the Primaris reinforcements, that's when they get the chapter right. master gets assassinated. Yeah. So yeah. B- brief tangent aside, that's yeah. the Mannheim gap, and it yeah. is super relevant to what we're talking about because they are churning out mega gargants yeah. at a vast rate yes. and they are smashing into Hell's Reach's yeah. walls they breach the walls and everyone starts to fall back through yes. the city now Storm Herald the, the, the titan, titan the Imperator Titan the big one mm-hmm. uh, they're making their way through and one of the priests decides because he there's like a, there's literally like a, ch- a chapel, a chapel on top, on top. Yeah. and he well, de- more of a cathedral on top of the entire thing yeah yeah and he decides I'm not really doing an awful lot of good here yeah I think I should be down there with the people you know, helping them doing the praising of, doing the, the, praising of the, the emperor and all that sort of thing so he jumps off yeah 
uh, moving Imperator Titan. Yeah, as he's like coming, as he's like coming past the yep. ledge or something. Yep. He's like, wee! Wee! Uh, and lo, a couple of days later, mm. does he get picked up by, or stumble into the camp of, uh, the Dock Master and Trooper Andre. Yeah. So it's a super, now we're bringing everyone together. Friar Tux here. Friar Tux here yeah. now. We've got this guy, and they're like, and he's like, what's happening? Yeah. And now and uh, and Trooper Andre's like, we're getting beat. <laughs> like, we're getting, yeah. We're getting I mean, beat. To be fair, the guy's like living like what for him is just this really quiet church that just happens to be on top of a yep. massive war machine. Yep. You know, uh, occasionally he shakes and makes loud noises, but he's just like you know uh, lighting the candles and yeah. making sure. A- all according the- to yeah. him, the void shield. Which mm. is round uh, every Titan. Mm. It sets his it like it, it creates this buzzing noise yeah. while it's on, and it was part of the reason he left was he just couldn't he just stand it anymore. Like, mm, it's yeah. like making his gums vibrate yeah. kind of all the time, yeah. and he's like, "There's got to be something better than this." And he yeah. just he just jumps out of the foot of the he's Titan. Just like, just, we, yeah, I'm off yeah, yeah. anywhere that isn't around this void shield. Mm. So. Uh, now, Trooper Andre and this this preacher are in the devastation of uh, of Armageddon, Hell's Reach, uh, Hell's Reach, and they're making their way uh, towards the still held part of the yes. city, uh, which is the other side of Hell's Highway. Mm. Uh, well, a big road that runs through the middle. Of the yeah, highway. it's the yeah. big connecting nervous system center of, of yeah. Hell's Reach. Basically, yeah. once you once you lose Hell's Highway. Essentially, they've lost, and they yeah. haven't quite lost it yet, but they're really it's close. close yeah. um, so everybody is kind of falling back to the the other sector, mm. and that's where Grimaldus now has a word from the uh, Tech Marine mm-hmm. that he has in fact got in, and he can set up the uh, the Ordinatus, Ordinatus Armageddon yeah. and start bringing it to Hell's Reach. Yes. Which of course a very big deal because this is a fucking great big Nova camel. Like right, reinforcements have arrived, yes. But it's going to take him a bit of a time to get there because mm. he's one tech priest, tech marine, dealing with what really should be done by hundreds yes. of tech priests and yeah. Skitari and, yeah, and, and servitors, servitors and, and, yeah. and he's like I think All he's got like three things. servitors and himself. Yeah. And it, he's piloting this massive gun yeah. and he's got to do it on his own. So that's going to take him a while to get get there yes. they continue to fall back through the course of the the city until they reach the temple of the emperor, emperor ascendant. ascendant i was wondering when this came in yeah this is the temple of the yeah. emperor ascendant which is the home of the order of the ardent shroud yes. uh, adeptus sororitas yeah. this it's is also the biggest cathedral in hell's reach yes it's one it, of the it, biggest it, it on... was the first one on the planet yeah. yes it's like the big the big yeah. hub of Worship of the Emperor on... For those who know 40k, this is the temple... This is the bits of the temple that Grimaldus' retinue is dragging around. Yes. Which will Um, become relevant. Become relevant in a moment. Um, So, basically, now you've got the whole of the 100 Black Templars in Hell's Reach at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And they've now fallen back into this section. Yes. When our good friend, Mm -hmm. Trooper Andre, with his priest also arrives at the temple of the Emperor Ascendant and greets once again our Grimaldus as though he's an old friend. Yes. Uh, once again, making Grimaldus wonder, Going, what, what the, the hell is this guy yeah. on? Like, Because he's like, ah, Reclusiarch, good to see you again. Everything is on. He's like, oh what? yeah, I know you, you right? Oh, yeah, I think <laughs> you remember, that, remember this human shape thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what is this? And he, uh, so Grimaldus, he says to he says to Andre, get, start getting set up to defend. This is our last stand. Yep. So Andre's, of course, let's get going. We've got the Templars to impress, yeah. you know, and mm. if we impress them, everything will be fine. Where Grimaldus goes off to meet with the uh, Sister Superior mm. of the <laughs> the Temple the of the Emperor Senate. The Grizzled Old Bat at yes. the, temp- the Temple. So she is uh, given to be roughly 70 years old, yeah. standard Terran. Which doesn't um, really mean much. Not really. She's probably she's roughly middle-aged, yeah. late middle-aged. Late middle-aged. Standards of most humans. Yeah, she's, but for us... Mm. For a fighter oh, yeah. in the Imperium, she's quite old, yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's kind of retired to this, yeah, this bit now. Yeah, she's been given a ceremonial position yep. because of her experience. Of that. However, the orcs have come, yeah, and uh, she basically glares down Grimaldus. Oh yeah, you don't and- mess with like sister superiors. <laughs> you know, if anyone's ever been to a Catholic school and knows what nuns are like, <laughs> like give them power. I'm going to bolt it and tell me you're not going to do what they tell you. So yeah, so he she basically 
is has, has taken offence that Grimaldus has arrived mm. and has sort of kind of assumed command. Oh yeah, and not asked her nicely. Yeah, could he? Could do, I please be in charge? Could I please be in charge? So she actually glares him down mm. and gets him to take his helmet off for only which the is sec- a huge thing. Right? Yeah, by the way, like yeah. Especially chaplains, the skull yes. mask is very much the whole idea. It's a bit like the confessional thing. It's that blank face. Yep. You can talk, say whatever you want to it. If you're a marine, all that. You never very rare that they show their faces to anyone, yes. especially let alone outside of the chapter. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. in this particular instance, Grimaldus has shown his face mm. for the th- what well, is the third time, but only to the second person because yeah. he removed he his helmet to the, twice to, to the, pro- the, the princeps. Princeps yeah, on yeah. a storm. Because it's like a big like that's yeah. the sort of breakthrough moment yeah. as he kind of goes look. And she recognises the level of, like, oh my god, yes. that is... Yeah, so the, for the second time, but mm. th- rather than him doing it voluntarily, like he mm. did with uh, Storm Herald yeah. and the princeps of Storm Herald, she kind of glares it off his face. Yeah. Uh, and is like, well, you won't even look me in the face. Yeah. You know you've done wrong, and you, you've not, you, you won't even look me in the eyes while yeah. you... And prove it. And he's like, well, I, I have to do it now, because otherwise... Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, So he takes off the helmet, and he actually, they both end up praying together. Yeah. Uh, he obviously oh. does not apologise, because heaven forbid that a space marine apologise, but he does request formally command of the forces at the temple yeah. of the Emperor Ascendant, which, of course, uh, the lovely old dear grants him. He's like, yes, yes you may. may. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can imagine that, really, obviously. Yeah. It's very um, always like, yeah, I've been in that situation before. He's like, yeah. He didn't ask for anything, and you ask him this, and he go. Of course you can. You're like, fuck's sake. Yes. Why can't we just done this? Why don't and then, of course, the, one of my favourite parts involving this old dear is that she then requests her armour from one of the initiates yeah. who says, but, but Sister Superior, how long has it been since you wore your armour? Yeah. And, and, she replies, and she replies with, you weren't even born yet and I'm still better in it than you are. Yeah. Uh, and, and off she toddles, gets her, gets her assisted power armour, it's not yeah. quite Space Marine power mm-hmm. armour, and her holy bolter, of course. obviously, and off she marches out to give rank to speeches to the mm-hmm. sisters uh, and she leaves everybody else to Grimaldus but of course she commands the sisters. Of course. So, so now... Don't, don't forget the braziers of holy fire. Oh yes, oh. there are a lot of braziers. Of course, a lot of braziers of holy fire. Holy fire, fire yes. Yes. Anyone who's been listening to this podcast will not yes. understand that joke. And... Yes, the braziers of Holy Fire were in fact lit yep, on fire. Yeah, still they, to be effective. Indeed, as they should be. Mm. While this is all going on, obviously there's a big fight now. The orcs are actually at the temple, yep. at the doors of the temple. Storm Herald is fighting with them at this point, really yeah. close by. Now they can't. Oh, he's picking around the he's <laughs> picking around the side, <laughs> going, <laughs> this, this, like you um, get like a bit of cover. <laughs> yeah, but they can't have the Titan too no. close because the gun firing would actually like blow out everyone every, yeah woman. everything yeah, yeah. so Storm Herald is close by the, with yeah. his safe it's reason relative. it's yeah. all relative it's all titans. relative yeah, yeah. when an opposing titan from the orcs the one that they've been building the one that the celestial the lion gargan. the mega gargan mm. arrives on the scene dun, dun, dun. now this is uh, larger than Storm Herald yes they yeah but larger in the sense that it is a bit longer but not quite as high. They're very square. If you uh, remember the old Titan Legions game, this is literally the op- the orc model from that. So yeah. You've got the Imperator Titan, which is the Imperial model from Titan Legions. Yep. And then on the other side, yeah, the massive brick that is the um, Mega Gargan. This Mega Gargan. And a uh, battle ensues between yes. Storm Herald and uh, the yeah. Mega Gargan. Indeed. And Storm Herald loses this fight. I remember this. Uh, now this bit is brought to you by the, the they're waiting for the Nova cannon I think it is or some yeah. kind of cannon I think it's a Nova to, cannon to, yeah, to power like up lance, yeah. uh, a big lance mm. battery of some description when the gunner says I have a shot and the, the, the aiming dude <laughs> I can't remember what they called one of the princeps um, yeah. Manorus basically says don't take the shot yet I've got, I've got a lock in, in like three seconds I've got yeah, a lock and the other guy punches the button uh, uh, fires the cannon and misses uh-oh. Now they can't charge the plasma generators back up in time as the big orc thing comes round Ooh. and literally tears Storm Herald in half. Yeah. The princeps Minoris that said wait in sort of indignation Ooh. shoots the gunner in the head. He's yeah. like, You're an idiot. If yeah. you'd have waited, we would have killed it. Yeah. And he shoots him. 
and then, the, yeah, the big, big plasma blast gun. Yeah, big plasma, plasma gun that's yeah. on the side, whatever they call those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, plasma annihilator. That's the one. It's a plasma annihilator. Yeah, so I was thinking between that and the lance battery. But yeah. yeah no, it's a plasma annihilator. It's a yeah. plasma annihilator, and it's just charged up, and if he'd waited a split Three second seconds, longer... Yeah. Then he would have had a proper aim and he would have hit the tie. Whether it would have ended it, but, we don't know, but we'll yeah. never know. It was definitely the better option. Yeah. Mm. And Storm Herald uh, is uh, brought low by this mm. Mega Gargant. Uh, at which point, our good friend the Tech Priest, Tech Marine, arrives yes. with the Ordinan- Ordinatus Armageddon, which is. Imagine it comes over the dunes. Like, yeah, it comes over the dunes. Massive. And, 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 <laughs> and, it, yeah, and he says, Grimaldus, I have arrived. And Grimaldus says, Shoot the big fucking gargant yeah, yeah. that's about to end all our fucking lives. Yeah. So they get one shot with so the... that moment in a st- strategy battle game. This yes. reminds me like this is a very much yeah. of a strategy battle game where like all your stuff's going wrong and then obviously your super weapon just finishes charging <laughs> up and you're just like iron cannon available. <laughs> you're like oh. So they he, the uh, tech pre tech marine fires the uh, ordinatus. It hits the gargant. The mm-hmm. gargant explodes. Yeah. Which takes most of the temple with it. Yes. Uh, however, it also takes the tech marine with it. With he the he all. gets all the feedback, all the mm. things that's supposed to be housed by all these loads, other, of, other, people, loads yeah. of other people, and he dies mm. at that point. So he's he's gone. Uh, the temple is now being swarmed with orcs, uh, and the aftershock of losing two titans mm. in very close proximity brings down the whole temple. Yeah. On top of everybody that's inside of it. Yes. And that is where the story of Hell's Reach kind of ends. Yeah. Because we kind of jump forward now to a mm. bit where reinforcements have got through. They managed to beat back Garskull, so he's left. Yeah. He's now gone off to do something else. He's left the planet. This will be planet. after Hive Tempest, Dora, and the yeah. main sort of the focal points. Yeah, yeah, so all the big focal points have happened in mm. other places, which were not in this bit. But we now get to the celebration part mm. of Hell's Reach being saved. Yeah. Uh, they get reinforcements from the ships who were able to come in because the fleets of orcs yeah, have left. They can now bring in uh, so they can now bring in reinforcements. They fight the orcs back. Mm. Obviously, they haven't necessarily won because this no, the, war is the, still the, the, technically the war happening. is kind of, yeah, it's yeah. turned. It's, yeah. it's, we're thinking like World War Two, end sort of late, late 44 and 45. Yeah, kind of yeah kind of. we're at that They're stage. on the way, They're on the, the retreat is happening, yeah. they're pushing them back, it's not over, they're still serious fighting, but yeah. the, the tide has turned. And, and Hell's Reach is saved. Mm. Now we're doing a little bit of a celebration where we have Grimaldus, yes. uh, who is the sole survivor of Hell's Reach. Of all the Black Templars. Of, oh, no, of, of, of all oh, right. forces in... Oh, wow. Hell's Reach, they are billing Grimaldus as oh, the sole right. surviving. Oh, because while we have the big celebration where Grimaldus yeah. and and because there are no Templars left alive, nope. they, they all die, including the Emperor's champion, Bayard. Mm-hmm. Uh he dies there. Mm-hmm. Uh Primus, who was his, due to be his replacement as the Emperor's champion, if anything mm-hmm. happened, part of Squad Grimaldus, he dies. All the Black Templars, all a hundred of them, bar Grimaldus, so ninety-nine in Hell's Reach, all die. So there's none left. And also, there are no guardsmen left. They've all perished as well. Mm-hmm. Apart from someone who thanks Grimaldus for all the good <laughs> words that he's put in for him. Because Trooper Andre and a group of his friends, about yeah. six of them, have also survived <laughs> Hell's Reach. And, and as, a, as a good friend, uh, Trooper Andre says to one of the parting words he gives to Grimaldus is, well, but don't worry, the reclusiarch, because me and my friends will keep very quiet about also surviving. Um... <laughs> And, and thank you for putting in a good word for me, which he remembered to do because yeah. Andre Trooper No More is now Captain Ooh. Andre of the Armageddon Steel Legion. Uh, and he says, well, thank you, Grimaldus. We really appreciate this. Yeah, and Grimaldus yeah, yeah. at this point, who this is the telling part of just how much humanity he's gained out in the corner of this, actually looks at Andre and he says, um, I, I'm very grateful for everything you did for me. And also, uh, how is your young lady that you were trying to impress? Yeah. Uh, to which Andre sort of shakes his head ever so much. Uh, and Grimaldus realises at this point that he, obviously the young lady has died, mm, yeah. uh, but he doesn't have the words to in any way understand and put forward that he understands yeah. what he is going through, whereas previously Grimaldus wouldn't, wouldn't, care. wouldn't care at all. Yeah, But he understands that, yeah, he's there, you can see there's something... 
but the nearest you can be like probably like yeah one of my closest bad brothers has died even yeah. then that's not really no, the same, same yeah. thing but I, I know there's something terribly wrong with this man mm. but I don't have the words or the yeah. ability to express I it I can't express it there's nothing yeah, showing yeah. me how different I am yeah, to these people to the humans and everything yeah, yeah. else but mm. that to me is the line of the story that's the difference between the Grimaldus who is convinced he is going to die yeah and really pissed about and it and really pissed about it and the Grimaldus at the end of the story mm. who understands just what they're fighting for now he's and how they very much tempered him yes that, that classic way of tempering a blade he's, yeah, yeah he's, he's very much at the start he's a fresh forged sword yep. he's really like ready to get in there get stuck he thinks he knows everything because he's high reclusive blah 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 but actually, the stuff he's gone through in this thing has kind of knocked the edges off, tempered yep. the steel, and kind of real, made him realise that actually, yeah, no, you, other things matter. Other things matter now. Yeah. It's, the, not, it's just, not just about you and your yeah. devotion to the Emperor. That yeah. Sometimes it is also about his servants. Yes, mm. and they are important as well. Yeah. Uh, and that, with the exception of one other thing, mm. is the end of the story. <sighs> There's a little mm. short story add-on at the end. Yeah. which isn't actually part of the Hell's Reach novel. And it's where the surviving Celestial Lions yeah. arrive at Grimaldus. Because the Celestial Lions, of course, are a Imperial Fist successor chapter. Yes. And so are the Black Templars. Yeah. And so they go and he says to them, this is what has happened to us. Mm. Can you help us like, get rid of the shame that is that we lost this mm. last fight? And Grimaldus does. He says to him, yes, yeah, we, will, we will absolve you. We will go and do that. Mm. And then you go from, I think, three or four down to one mm. uh, surviving Celestial Lion. But Grimaldus goes with him with the Black Templars yeah. and he's like, Mannheim Gap, fuck you, smash. Yeah. Uh, and they do it properly. Yeah. And, and that is a little short story at the tack on of the end yeah. of it. Uh, that is the last that we hear of Captain Andre. Oh. Uh, I don't know if there's another story involving him. I hope there will be at some point. Yeah. Uh, even if it is just what happens to him and how he dies. Mm. Uh, because obviously he's in the guard and everybody in the guard dies. Nobody retires. No. He's not getting a happy ever after, unfortunately. No. But we do hear loads more about Grimaldus because yes. you know he is awesome. But that is Hell's Reach in the space of what? An hour. That is that is Hell's Reach clear and, and uh, clear and concise as best we can. We, I missed out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. There, but... Obviously, you get a lot more from. The, but from I, the adv book. I advise the audio book. Yes, it is or, and the awesome animation. Awesome animation series taken using the audio book as a basis. Yes, it is the yes. abridged version of the audio book, yes, but it is still, it is still very, audio, very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, if you want to know more about Hell's Reach, I'll of link course. the YouTube video in the description. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's done the the man who made it now works mm. for Games I say check, Also check out Angels of Death. Angels also of Death, just yes. Awesome if, he did that. A yeah. Guardsman, very short. It's only a few minutes mm. long, but oh, definitely worth watching. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that is the story of uh, Hell's Reach, Grimaldus, and our good friend Trooper Andre. So yes, if you have any... The first time I heard that story was the first um, 40k story that had ever made me cry. And it yes. makes me cry every time. <laughs> yeah. There, there, some stories just yeah, hit you like yeah. that. I, 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 I don't... It didn't make me overly emotional. Right up until the bit where Andre says... like You, you get the shake of the head and Grimaldus yeah. is yeah. like... I want to say something... But yeah, I don't have don't, the words, don't or, have the the words or the language yeah. to be able to because I don't know like what love is. Yeah, like they of course they love the emperor and all that sort of thing, but that's but it's built not, into them. It's yeah, not the same thing. Yeah. It's not familial or romantic love. Yeah. It is just programmed into them, and also like, the return the fraternal love is yeah, very different. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. so, Grimaldus understands, yeah. but he then realizes that. He it just doesn't doesn't understand. Doesn't yeah. understand. He doesn't know what this yeah. this man is feeling. But he, he has this something, but he couldn't yeah. articulate if you gave if, him a century. Yeah, yeah. He, he can't do it. It's mm. not built into Space Marines yeah. to be able to do that. But he also values this man. He saved his life multiple times because he has the ability to do this. Yeah. Thing. Like whilst they may be superhuman giants, yep. he, he this one trooper has abil has abilities and yeah. and things that to, to, that he will never have yep. because it's been gone from him. Yeah, yeah it's been and that's the dichotomy of Space Marines. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like, it's the whole yeah. thing of like. They sacrifice their humanity in order to be humanity shield. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I think the better writers understand that yeah, about definitely. Because one of the things like Forty K is very dark. It's very grim. There's a lot of it as an overall universe. It's awful. It's yes. an awful, terrible place. But I think the best part about it for me, and the thing why I love it so much, is the candles in the darkness. Yes, and it's those little flickering flames that make Forty K worth it. Yeah, definitely. Like it's the people like Dante. 
You know, yeah, it's it is it's Grimaldus. It's it's the Yarek. It's the heroes. Yeah, the heroes. Know, that... It's it's Kane. It's it's um, <laughs> Kane. Yeah, it's all. Cool. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like all of these people. Yeah, Eisenhorn in his own way. It's all of these people there, flickering flames in the darkness that keep back the absolute darkness of night. Yeah, and it's like they provide that spark, and even it shows that even in the darkest times, even the darkest. You know, possible timeline that there are still hope and still good people in yeah. a bad world. Yeah, I think I think that's I, I like it for the same reason. Mm. I think I, I, for that reason is one of the reasons that I really like forty k lore. Yes. Uh, whereas with um, old world lore, yeah, it's about the story. Yeah, I think and yeah, the adventure. It, it is. It's, it's more. Yeah, it is. It's like it doesn't ever feel as. Hope, not hopeless, not hopeless, because mm. obviously it isn't. I'm trying to find the words to describe it myself, but yeah, yeah. I know. I know the feeling you're trying to express yeah. is yeah. Void K Rose feels like you know it is, it's those little hope, little flames yeah. in the darkness. Whereas Warhammer Fantasy has always been, it is that kind of classic, like you say, more adventure, more adventure. Yeah, yeah you, even you, even the yeah. bad guys don't they don't feel as bad, yeah. even though they are effectively the same thing, and they are all just as terrible. Like yeah. the fact that you can mutate and you could have the kids with like you could have a baby and the baby's all got like tentacles and stuff, yeah. and <laughs> like this is a horrific place, but it feels more adventure because it's a fantasy setting, yeah. I think, and it feels like because there's these big. Solid civilizations that where a lot of people just live lives and they're happy. Yeah, like it's not quite as grim dark. No, it isn't. No. no, and I think not. yeah, it's that, I enjoy them both for different reasons. Yeah, but yeah. I think, uh, yeah. I think I think if you if you take that adventure where you've got like uh, got uh, Felix Yeager, yeah, yeah. for example, who's a poet. And he goes through some dark shit. And he shit. goes through some really dark shit, but he comes out the other side yeah. and he's still Felix Yeager. Yeah, all Malice Dark uh, Raid, any like, yeah. you know, they, like you could have fun with, with yeah. anti heroes and stuff. There's yeah. more fun to be had in one of fantasy than there is in 4K. There's no fun. There's no real 4K. fun. Like, there, there's a few bits of like said, Commissar yeah. Kane, a bit yeah. lighthearted, but yeah. it's still like mm, yeah. you know, it feels I really, really dark. I also think it. that um, quite a lot of the grim dark of the forty first millennium reflects a lot of the the darkness that we're facing at the moment. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I, that, is, I'm trying. I was trying to avoid getting to it, but yeah, yeah it is, it is, again, and it helps for me when I'm when I'm having trouble, like looking out of the world and seeing the yep. terrible crap that goes on around there. Is knowing that if, if, if you, this is nowhere near as bad as the forty first millennium is, and if there's lights and hope there. Yeah, there must be brighter lights and more hope here. Yeah, there, yeah. there is always hope. Yeah, yeah like uh, and that, that's a very fantasy. That's a Galadriel thing it is, for you. There yes. is, as long as there is hope, there is light mm. in the dark. Yes. And I think that travels through both worlds. But yeah, mm. I think if you want the grim dark part with the the the, the candle in the dark, then yeah. that is forty k. And if you want the more adventure driven. Almost yeah. role play. It's more like the roaring fire yeah. with the shadows flickering on the wall. It's yeah. almost the opposite way yeah, around. Yeah. That, yeah, there's darkness hidden in the shadows yeah. of Warhammer rather than it being all encompassing. Yeah, and just uh, there's a few like lights. Yes, and that, by the way, was my little segue. Ooh. Yes, because next time <gasps> dun, dun, dun. we are going to be discussing orcs. Ah, a, a <laughs> nice with a C or a K. Ah, well, first of all, Ooh. we're going to be discussing orcs twice. Okay. So the first time we're going to be discussing the orcs of the old world. So orcs with a C. Orcs with a C. Mm. And then the second time, which will be the week after, we're going to be discussing the orcs of the forty K universe. With a K. Ooh. With a with a notably. With, notably with a K. Ooh. So we're gonna have two weeks of orcs. So but, whilst we've been quite dark and talking about some we're really yeah. there with about the hope and thing, this is now gonna be quite some light hearted episodes. So yes, because, because the orcs do tend they to do bring, bring, even in like the darkness of the forty first millennium, we talk about flickers of hope, but these are just flickers of comedy more yeah, than yeah, anything pretty else. Much. <laughs> Uh, but first, this is more like two of silly string in the darkness <laughs> than a candle. Yes, it's the uh, the party popper of yes. uh, of hope. It is, yeah. Yes. Big flash and a lot of random confetti. Yes, <laughs> yeah. That sounds like my wedding. Um, anyway, the <laughs> oh, getting funny looks. Check. Uh, Which but, part? Back out of the joke. Back out of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah. So first, we're going to the old mm. world for orcs. Yep, because there is a difference between the two and we'll discuss we'll run through all the major and notable mm. characters and then of course we will go on to the 40k orcs where we will run through some of the major and notable characters but not all because there's mm. fucking endless amounts oh, of orcs oh yeah they're one of those yeah. factions that have been around since year dot yeah. so they have yeah they're one of the most fleshed out yeah and we will however be completely skipping the war of the beast yes because bollocks yes. to that book a Amen. series it's awful yeah and needs to be just yeah, scooted quietly off into forgotten. quietly forgotten with the exception of Draken Vangarich and the beheading because yes. that's the only bit that's worth reading it for yeah. apart from that one specific part yeah, yeah. the rest it's of it's ironic because it's the only the bit that doesn't involve any orcs but yep. yeah the, the, the absolute drivel of a novel mm. series uh, but yeah so we'll not be covering that but we nope. will be covering important characters 
uh, and our friend Garskull Mag Uruk Thraka. But yes, that is all for today. Thank you for listening. It's mostly me. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, for, this is uh, interesting for me. Yeah. I get to listen this time. Yeah, I know, right? It's not just me spouting random knowledge that comes out of my yeah, this is, brain. This is my one of my yeah, like favourite things. Yeah, so yeah, yeah so I like I like Talent Search. It's been good fun. Yeah. But yes, so it's, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. And it's also goodbye from her. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>